Yes, class. Am I audible to all of you? Khadija, Lina, Nuha? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, see, let us complete this gravitation lesson quickly because we have to start with book two also and my little time is left. Though I'm trying to arrange for your separate classes also so that at least thermal physics could be started so that in this batch still fluids we will be able to complete. But some of you sometimes having chemistry class, maths class. So let's see which at least one hour also we'll get. It would be sufficient because I have to start with thermal physics separately. And also, if you get any schedule regarding your any type of exam right now only, please update me in advance. All right. Either text me on WhatsApp. Let me know in the class or text on the learning view number. You are on the group also. Let me know through the group also. All right. So that at least I, I'll have an idea. So accordingly, I'll prepare and whatever portions will be extra that will be left. That could be covered separately also. Right, I'll also have something in my mind when is your exam starting. So as soon as you get any information regarding your exams, final exams, any exam, do let me know with the syllabus. If you get the syllabus, it's the best. Hi. Yes, class. Now, a uh, gravitational field, we have to start. We started with the lesson gravitation. There we had seen Newton's law of gravitation. So Newton's law of gravitation was F is equal to G M1 into M2 divided by R squared. This is a universal law which will be used throughout this lesson. So keep this in mind. And uh, let's start with gravitational field now. See, gravitational field basically means, uh, just uh, look at this example. I'll give you an example. Look at this example. Suppose this is a huge, big mass, fine? This is stationary. It's not moving. It's, this is stationary. I am calling this as the source mass. I am calling this as the source mass, fine? Okay, now next case. I have a small mass M, which I am calling it as the test mass. Now class, what am I doing? When I have the source mass stationary, I am bringing this test mass close to it. I am seeing nothing is happening. Nothing is occurring. Here, 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 yaha par, idhar, here, everywhere I have checked. But as soon as I am bringing it here, near the vicinity of the source mass, up to a certain defined area, I am seeing that a certain force of attraction I am able to feel. A certain force of attraction is existing. Fine? This means, see, this is the same test mass. This is that test mass only. Test mass is movable. We can move this. This is movable. Source mass is stationary. So I have brought, I have moved it here, here, here. Nothing has occurred here when I have moved it. So finally, as I have brought it here or here or anywhere in this space, I am able to exert a force. I, I am feeling that a force is existing. So this space no, around the mass in which you will feel that yes, gravitational force is existing in this entire belt around an object, this entire space. This space exists around an, every object and that is known as its own gravitational field. This is what is the meaning of gravitational field. It's a property of single mass. You have this mass, it will be having its own field. This mass, it will be having its own field. This mass, this will be having its own field. But if you are out of the field, you will not be able to see or experience any gravitational force. This is one thing that you have to keep in mind. Secondly, what is meant by gravitational field intensity? See, gravitational field intensity is different and gravitational field is different. Field is just the space around the mass. Fine, space around the mass. This is clear, easy to learn. Space around the mass where gravitational force exists. Gravitational field intensity is the force that is experienced by, see, gravitational force 
experienced by the test mass. When the force gets divided by mass, we call it as gravitational field intensity. SI unit Newton per kg. C force SI unit is Newton. Mass is SI unit is kg. So, Newton per kg. Fine. Newton per kg. This is gravitational field intensity. Now, how will we get the formula? See, if this is the source mass, fine. This is the source mass. I'll be having the test mass and the source mass, fine? Here is the gravitational field, this line that I have drawn. Here is the gravitational field of the source mass. So, I have brought the test mass here. Their separation is R. So, here gravitational force is existing, correct? This is the part. This is the orbit. This is the final boundary of the gravitational field of the source mass. So, this final line, this is the this is the gravitational force experienced by the test mass. So, what is the formula for force? Force will be capital G into capital M into small m divided by R square. Simple. This one is from the Newton's. This one is from the Newton's law. Now, gravitational field intensity is force by mass. Put the value of force G capital M small m by R square and this small mass was already there. Mass mass will be cancelled. I will be equal to capital G into capital M by R square. No involvement of the small test mass. A question also we'll see. Let's see this question. It will be a little clear to you. So, so, you see, one mass is sufficient for such types of questions. See here, no other mass is present, right? Now, gravitational field intensity or gravitational field magnitude when you have to find out. Formula is G capital M by R square. From the formula of Newton's law of gravitational force, just delete that M and as it is, everything will be there. Now, at this particular point P, I want to find out what is what is its gravitational field. I don't need any other mass now. Till up to what is the gravitational field at point P. Right. So, what will I do? Capital G is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11. What is the mass given? Mass given is 2 kg. What is the separation given? 3. So, 3 square. So, this will be around 12.2 into 10 to the power minus 11 by 9. This you can solve and further let me know. This, this is the value of intensity. Fine. Other questions we will see. First, you copy this down. Then we will see other questions. First, write this down. Everything is clear to you till now. Mariam, have you joined just now? Mariam. Yes, ma'am. Okay, write it down. If you're not able to understand anything, please let me know. Okay.
yes class written uh see superposition principle we have discussed when you were talking about forces so here also if there are various gravitational field intensities given various masses are there so various forces will be there here various masses are present and at a particular point i want to find out the net total gravitational field so how will i find total gravitational field i know the individual fields i1 i2 i3 so i'll just add them vectorically when i say vectorically proper usage of vectors if still anyone is weak in vectors please let me know whatever your weak topics are be it calculus including your integration differentiation or your um, vectors any topic i'll arrange separate classes but do not let this hang on and carry it forward to class 12th because in class 12th also everything will be there and especially for gravitation chapter i have been repeating myself that this lesson is as it is there in your class 12th also with just involvement of charges instead of masses yes so the net gravitational field at a particular point is the sum of all the gravitational field intensities of the individual net field at point is the vector sum of individual intensities i1 vectorically added to i2 vectorically added to i3 and so on up till i n it one more note point that you have to keep in mind is that for symmetrical distribution at the center the way gravitational force was zero gravitational field will also be zero at the center if the body is symmetrical like a circle triangle square pentagon hexagon octagon all the symmetrical figures at the center if you are asked directly without even calculation you can mark it as zero but yes in your subjective papers you have to show the work so that's a limitation but you should be knowing the answer that it is zero coming at the end now there is a type of question that comes which i think we have similarly done it in the fourth one also calculate the point at which gravitational field is zero this point now this point is known as neutral point gravitational field is zero means no force uh, no gravitational line of force is existing at that point that's why we are getting gravitational field zero at that particular point see two masses are there 2 kg masses present 6 kg masses present and they are separated by 10 meters we have to find out the point where gravitational field is zero so what we do we'll assume gravitational field to be zero at a certain separation from one mass from any one mass take a certain separation like this is 2 kg i'll take this as x suppose the gravitational field is zero that is the neutral point lies at x separation from 2 kg mass now how much separation is left if total was 10 i have extracted i have taken x from it how much is this yes class how much is left where is the gravitational field zero for 6 kg mass total separation is between them is 10 meters this is separated i have taken this separation as x so how much 6 kg is separated from the neutral point if you all will not be able to answer this 10 question 10 minus x 10 minus x other students also please be responsive in the class otherwise i'll make it mandatory for all of you to open up your cameras and mics in the next class if you aren't responsive then how will i be even knowing who is understanding which part please keep on responding so yes mariam has correctly answered that this will be 10 minus x this separation will be 10 minus x now see if i say that at this particular point gravitational field is zero it means it must have been something like gravitational field due to a plus gravitational field due to this b let's say this is a this is b this is zero so they are cancelling each other it means i a must be equal to i b in magnitude that's why you no know, two things are cancelling each other when i say two things are cancelling each other it means their magnitude is same otherwise one wouldn't have cancelled it 
So I A, yes, this is two kg. At this particular point, I want to find out the gravitational field. So I A, yes, uh, Khadija, let's start from you. What is the gravitational field at this point? Let's say this is the neutral point N. I want to find out this separation is X. This is 2 kg. What is the gravitational field? Just tell me this part only. Rest of the question will be done. Khadija. Yes, Khadija Khan. 2 kg mass. At least try, Khadija. At least try, at least try. You have written the general formula of gravitational field, right? In the starting of the class today. So see, what was what is the first thing that, that is mandatory and is universal will definitely come in your answer. Yes, Khadija? <clears throat> Universal gravitational constant. G, capital G. Very good. Gravitational constant G. Next thing, what do you think should come for this A? Uh, the mass. Mass. Mass is? 2 kg. 2 kg. Very good. Mass is 2 kg. Perfect. C, generalized formula is G M by R square. Now, yes. Uh, yes. Um, Khadija, in the denominator, one thing is only left. All of you, have, rest of the things you have answered it very well. At the neutral point, end point, I want to find out for this mass. What should be the separation, Khadija? Yes. X. So? X squared. X squared. Perfect. Clear, Khadija? Very good. You have yes. answered it correctly. Only this was needed. Very good, Khadija. Next, Khudeja. See, Khadija has answered for A part. For B part, Khudeja, you try. What should come? See, formula is same for this mass at this point. Now, this is the case. Khudeja Bashir. At least try. Unmute yourself. Try. Yes, Khudeja. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Khudeja. So, this is the generalized formula GM by R square. This is the mass. This is the separation. Now, can you start telling me? What should I write first? G into 6. G into 6. Perfect. Divided by? 10 minus X. Whole square. Perfect. Very good, Khodeja. 10 minus X, whole square will also come. Yes. So, uh, G, G will be cancelled. C, this, uh, let's not cancel this. Let's just cross multiply these two. So, if we have to find out X, we'll have to take the root. This becomes root 2 by X is equal to root 6 by 10 minus X. So, root 2 into 10 minus root 2 into x cross multiplication is equal to root 6 into x cross multiplication. Okay. So, I'll bring the x term over that side. So, 10 root 2 is equal to root 2 plus root 6 x. Correct. So, what is the value of x coming? x is 10 root 2 divided by root 2 plus root 6. This is the answer for x. If I want to find this, is, this means this much meters is separated from 2 kg mass. And if I want to find it from the 6 kg mass, I'll subtract it from 10. I'll get this distance. Like this, you have to solve all these questions. Uh, one very short question this is four point masses are placed at the vertices of a pentagon calculate field at the center so do we need to calculate this what do you think okay this, uh, do one thing write down everything till here and then let me know what's the answer for this coming
Yes, class. Tell me the answers for this question. Four point masses are placed. See, uh, Mariam, like you have answered no zero. At first glance, this appears that the answer to this will be zero because just now you people have written a point which says that four point masses, uh, which are whichever point masses are placed at the edges of symmetrical figures, we'll always have this as zero. Correct. That's what we have studied. That's what we have been studying. Now look. Here the problem that arises, why it's not matching is that A, B, C, D, E. These are the five uh, points. Now, but the masses that are present, you know, that are only four. One mass here, one mass here, one mass here, and one mass here. That's it. This is asymmetrical figure now. This is an asymmetrical figure now because this mass is not present. Suppose, let's say this mass was present. So, Ia plus Ib plus Ic plus Id plus Ie, then it would have been zero. Now, what do we have to find out? We just have to find out IC. What is IC equal to? IC, we have to find out IC, right? At this point, IC, we have to find out. So, it's basically the sum of all the this IC is equal to the gravitational field intensity due to all the four masses according to this if we just take the magnitude of this and this correct class and what do we have to find out we have to ultimately find out this only four point masses gravitational field so instead of calculating it separately if this is equal to the individual gravitational field of due to one mass directly we can say the gravitational field intensity will be gm by r squared is it clear See, I'm repeating. Four point masses are present. Fifth is missing class. Let us assume a fifth mass was present here. So what would have been the total sum of all the five masses? It would have been zero. Which is missing? IC is missing. So IC, if you put IC on one side and rest of all them on one side, that is IC is equal to IA plus IB plus ID plus IE. So all these we have ultimately have to find out this only. This was the question. So all the four masses sum is equal to this individual gravitational field. So it's a very short trick to answer this question. Uh, nextly, uh, see gravitational field due to certain figures. If you remember, if a hollow sphere is given, a point outside is taken, a point at its surface is taken, and a point inside is taken. Three points. One, two, and three. So for the first one, that is outside the gravitational field will be G, capital M, and whatever is the separation, small r square. At the surface, it will be G into capital M divided by what's the separation? Capital R, that is the radius whole square. And gravitational field intensity inside will be zero. So gravitational field inside is zero. So if you plot the graph, for the hollow sphere, it would be, see, inside it 0, 0, 0. At the surface, you are getting a value, which is g m by r square. And then again, outside, you are getting a value g m by r square. Here it is 0. This is how you will get the graph also. Whereas if you have a solid sphere, for solid, outside is same, surface is same, inside is different. The third case, that is it is different. This is not zero. This is capital G into capital M 
into small r divided by r cube. It has a very lengthy derivation, which now has been deleted in your syllabus. So we'll not be doing that. Whatever things are important and included in the syllabus, that only we are focusing on. Suppose a ring is given. That is in the along the y z plane. This is kept, and an axis through its center is taken. Now we have to find out the gravitational field. These formula are just additional. If by chance these are asked in your questions, otherwise nobody is going to ask you this. Capital G into capital M into R. R is the axis. This separation. Fine. Whereas capital R is the radius so capital r square plus small r square into to the power 3 by 2 and see this is at the center at the center this entire will be zero so see at the center of a ring we always get gravitational field intensity zero right due to symmetrical figure this is zero and one small thing that is left see Class, gravitational field for a point mass, if it is asked, then also you have to show the same derivation. That I is equal to G M into small m by R square, where there is a small m. Mass, mass will be cancelled. I will be equal to capital G by M by R square. This same derivation you have to show if this question comes, gravitational field for a point mass. For the same, you have to show. Right? And if it says direction is towards the source mass, why the direction is towards the source mass? The question can come because this is producing. Why this mass is source mass is stationary is constant because this is the one. What is source mass? Source mass is producing gravitational field. Source mass is producing gravitational field. And that's why it has to be static. And that's why we are taking this as the source mass. Write down all these points. This completes with this entire topic. Write it down first. Anywhere you get stuck, let me know. Please let me know, class, because this is a very important topic. Then we'll start with the last point, last segment of this lesson.
yes class now see gravitational energy so gravitational energy is basically the work done if you are having one mass let's say we have one mass capital m and one mass was small m so from infinity to a particular point p i am bringing this small mass from infinity to a particular point p which is separated by small r separation now in between this path i have taken two very 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 small points infinitesimal small points dx and their separation from the bigger initial mass that is x now energy is what energy is basically work done always remember whenever you have to get the derivation of energy you will be needing the concept of work done here the force will be i have taken these two points ab very small points dx separated by x let's say first i have brought m at a because see class if i know this if i know the energy between ab i'll be able to expand it to infinity and i'll be able to expand it i'll be able to integrate it and find out the for a variety and a wider range that's why fine so work done is equal to force into displacement that is f dx cos 0 degree which is f dx fine f dot dx now force is capital g into capital m into small m divided by the separation x square this m is at a point right now not here at a point so work done will be c force into displacement integrating it from now you can integrate it from we are we are integrating it from we are bringing this from infinity to the point p so separation is r so integrate it from infinity to r you know for a very small portion you know the energy for a very small separation you can integrate it for the entire length which you want that's the power of integration that's why we are bringing integration into our calculations now we have to simply integrate them integrate it so see capital g capital m into small m all these are constants 1 by x square can i write it as x to the power minus 2 dx fine infinity to r in, uh, expanding it from infinity to r this is capital g capital m into small m x to the power minus 2 plus 1 here this is minus 2 plus 1 integrating from infinity to r why i hope you know the rules x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 correct now g capital m small again i am repeating anybody who has problem with differentiation integration vectors any basic topic please let me know and get it clarified in class 11th whoever will be teaching you in class 12 will be having a great trouble if you and you also will be also having a great trouble if you are not aware with the concept of these basic calculations anyways this is taken out uh minus 1 is there now minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 so i'm keeping this minus 1 here what am i left with 1 by x right this is x to the power c x to the power minus 1 by minus 1 is left so i am bringing this in the denominator 1 by x and this minus 1 is here from infinity to r work done is minus g capital m small m 1 by r minus 1 by infinity 1 by infinity is 0 always remember this term will be 0 so what is your work done work done is minus g capital m small m by r now this entire work done gets stored in the form of potential energy gravitational potential energy so you get the exact formula minus g capital m small m by r see how will you remember this formula from the gravitational force from the main gravitational force one r has been eliminated minus gmm by r square was the form gmm by r square was the formula now you have only have gmm by r now there is a minus sign also coming something new minus sign is coming this negative sign so this can also be asked to you what is the significance of this negative sign and why are we getting this we are getting this we know because we have done integration and because of integration because of the calculations we were getting but is it having any physical significance 
yes it is having this is telling you that the forces are attractive in nature forces are attractive in nature that is system is bounded these two are present they are bounded to each other by the gravitational force it will be also having its field it will be also having its field like this you have to remember and also remember one thing m1 m2 if they are separated by infinity suppose this case comes to you that the separation is infinity that is r is infinity so this instead of r we'll have infinity and you know one by infinity is zero so potential energy is zero whenever you have potential energy zero always and always you have the maximum potential energy fine this is the maximum value because if it is positive if this becomes positive this will be minimum fine so work done to make the system is potential energy and to break the system is negative of potential energy this derivation is important class this can come in your five markers also write it down
write it till here. You can leave. Now see class. In the next class, uh, I'll be taking your two hours class because this way, you no, know, this lesson won't be completed. We have to complete. Only this last portion is there. So let us complete and start with solid. It's a short lesson also. So two hours class will be there. You will get break in between. Five to ten minutes break we'll take in between. So proper two hours class will have because one and a half hour duration is very less. So next class, let's meet. Write it till here. And as you will complete, you can leave on one by one. You can attempt your after class assessment. Thank you so much, class.